Hello, this is Mr. Payne with another fabulous IXL tutorial. Today we're working on O18 transversal to parallel lines, find the angle measures. All right, let's go ahead and get started today and see what we got. The first step is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the angles and information they're giving me by looking at the diagram. And if line SU and line VX are parallel lines and the measure of angle STW is 110, what is M, which is the measure of angle XWT? All right, so my first step is I wanna label STW and see what that looks like. So STW is 110, so we got 110 degrees right there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notate that as our red angle. Then I'm gonna use the measure of angle x w t to figure out our missing angles now according to the alternate interior angles theorem they should be the same so remember we talked about alternate interior angles so what that means is basically on the inside with the same transversal line which means they share the same line it should be the same so this one is 110 as well so as you guys get started on this ixl for 018 Keep in mind, if it seems confusing or you're like, well, wh what do you mean? What is he talking about, like, interior, alternate interior angles? Well, that's from previous OIXLs, okay? So it's important that you do your other IXLs before jumping to this one because this one's going to require previous information. All right, getting into the next one. Let's see. We got line SU and line VX are parallel lines, and measure of STR is 110. S T to R is 110. All right. And we are looking for the measure of S T W. So S T W, which is on the inside. So the question mark is here. Now, based upon the supplementary angle theorem, supplementary means sharing a line of 180 degrees. See how this is 180 degrees? What we could do is take 180 degrees minus 110 degrees to give us our missing angle. All right. So this is where I got the calculator open. It's going to be super handy. So I'm going to use uh, 180 minus 110. And you can also say, well, what about 18 minus 11? Then add the zero back on. And 18 minus 11 is 7. Add the zero back on to 70. So our missing angle here is equal to 70 degrees based upon supplementary angle theorem. All right, so let's go ahead and put that in there. We got 70 degrees. All right, we got ourselves another problem here. Look at this diagram. If GI and JL are parallel lines and the measure of LKH is 50 degrees, let's go find that. LKH, that's 50 degrees. What is the measure of IFH? So measure of IFH. I'm going to start with I, go to H, and go to F. Now notice they are the same angle. So this one would also be 50 degrees. So there we go, 50 degrees. All right, next one. We got JL, MO are parallel lines, MO. Yep, and measure of JKI. So measure of J, where's my J? Here we go, JKI, which is in here, is 44 degrees. What is the measure of LKN? So I'm going to keep my stuff labeled. That was that angle there. And measure of LKN, LKN. Well, wait a minute. If... They share the vertex or the vertice of K, which means the same angle, and they're across from each other. This goes back to vertical angles, and vertical angles also must be the same. So using vertical angles of this one, it is also 44 degrees. All right, next up, we got QS and TV are parallel lines, and the measure of Q 
label that. So we got start with Q, R, and U is 114. What is the measure of V U R? So measure of start start with V V U R, and that's on the inside. And this is going to go back to alternate interior angles. So this one will be 114. All right, next one, we're looking at the diagram. We got measure of angle FGE. FGE is 112. Then we got measure of HGJ. H, G, and J. All right, and because they are across from one another, sharing the angle of G, this goes to vertical angles, and vertical angles are also congruent, which means they're the same. So it's with 112. Now, if you're thinking, well, Mr. Painter, what if I just put the same number as what the other angle is? You might get some right, you might get some wrong. So it hasn't always been exactly the same. But understand why it works and why sometimes it doesn't work. Because like the one with supplementary angles, that one didn't work. So check it as you go. And I'm sure as we go up in our score, we got a score of 49 right now. Things tend to change up. All right. Line DF and line GI are parallel. And we're going to go ahead and map out the measure of angle I, H, E, which is 132. And we are looking for the measure of F, E, C. So F, E, C. So on this one here, because I, H, E, and F, E, C share the transversal, and use each of the parallel lines, this is going to be the corresponding angles theorem. So corresponding angles. And when they're corresponding angles, they are also the same. So again, this one here, corresponding angles. So we're going to go ahead and use 132. All right, next up we got line GI and line JL are parallel lines, and we're looking for the measure given to us of GHK, GHK is 126. What is the measure of LKH? LK to H. Okay. LKH is also going to be 126 based upon the interior angle. Okay, alternate interior angles. Okay, so they're both on the inside. They're alternating. So this one here, 126. So far, doing real good. Moving right along here. All right. If line GI and JL are parallel lines and measure of JKM is 66 degrees, let's go find it. JK to M is 66 degrees. What is the measure of M? And I'm like thinking of the measure of M. I'm like looking for the M. I'm like, there's no M in there. <laughs> We're looking for the measure of angle G H K G H K. And this one goes back to corresponding angles. They are also the same. So this one is a corresponding angle, 66 degrees. All right, we got ourselves another one here. We got if CE and FH, and that little thing on top represents line notation. So if line CE and line FH are parallel lines, and the measure of HGD, HGD is 111 degrees, what is the measure of CDG? So C, D, to G. All right. So, and that's going to be your alternate interior angles. So also the same on that one. Alternate interior angles. All right. Next up, we got 
line FH and line IK are parallel lines. And we're going to go ahead and map out the measure of HGE. HGE, 65 degrees. What is the measure of KJG? K, J, and G. And this is going to go to corresponding angles. Corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, they share one transversal and each of the parallel lines. So 65 degrees as well. All right, we're out of smart score 72. Rock and roll and ride along, no problem. Woo. All right, we're looking for the putting down the measure of JKI. J K to I is 50 degrees. Then we're going to go ahead and look for the measure of O N K. O N K. Now, if you take a look here, O N K has a larger opening than our J K I, which means if you're trying to be sneaky and like, hey, I think it's the same answer every time, this one problem you'd be getting wrong. But we're not going to get it wrong. We don't want that. So based upon corresponding angles, well, what do you mean, Mr. Painter, corresponding angles? Well, if we take this angle here and make a corresponding and change it to here, this would be 50 degrees here. Now, because now this corresponding angle that it moved over here can share a supplementary angle with ONK, we can use our 180 degrees subtract out our 50 degrees to figure out what is our O N K make sense. So again, what did I do here? We have, we, these are corresponding angles. So I took the J K I slide it over, made it into M N K cause these two angles are the same. And now I turned this into a supplementary angle where I know it has to be 180 degrees. So 180 minus 50 degrees. Ooh, so hard. What about 18 minus 5? 18 minus 5 takes us to 13. Add the 0 back on. 180 degrees minus 50 degrees is 130 degrees. So don't confuse the large numbers for being too difficult because they're not that bad. So your missing angle here is 130 degrees based upon using corresponding angles as well as supplementary angles. So using your definitions that you learned earlier really came in handy. So careful. Don't just put the same answer. We go, oh, the answer is 50. I would have worked on this one. So 130. Smart score is 75. Rolling right along because I'm being careful. Uh, we got line FH and line IK are parallel lines. And the measure of KJL, K to J to L is 134. We are looking for the measure of M. I did it again. I'm like looking for the measure. I'm like, there's no M in the diagram. Because M represents the word measure. Measure of angle H. There we go. H-G-E. H-G-E. Okay, now notice that the orange opening here is much smaller than our red opening here. So they're not the same again. So we got to figure out something. Now, based upon the exterior angle theorem, F G E is an exterior angle of K J and L. So again, these are two exterior angles. Now going back to supplementary angles where I can take F G E and H G E and turn that into 180 degrees. Now I can just take my 180 degrees, subtract out the 134 degrees, 134 degrees and let me be proper here i'll put the little degrees there there we go and that's going to give us our missing angle of hge so use a calculator on this one i don't want to get it wrong so i got 180 minus 134 and that's going to give me 46 degrees so equals 46 degrees Again, not bad, not bad. Just using all the definitions I learned earlier, so 46 degrees. Okay, last problem. We're at a smart score of 78, going for a smart score of 80. So we got 
line QS and line TV are parallel lines, measure SRP. SRP is 46 degrees. And we are going to be looking for the measure of TUW. TUW. Oh, how nice. These are actually already alternate exterior angles, which means they're the same. Because TUW is an alternate exterior angle of SRP. So this one, they do match. Which gives me to a smart score of hopefully 81. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. All right. This concludes your fabulous IXO 018 transversal parallel lines. Finding the angle measures. Take your time. They're not always the same. Because <laughs> when you get uh, go too fast, oh, yeah, they're the same. You're just going to lose points really fast. Don't, don't do that. Besides that, have a fabulous day.